Uh, so there I was, chilling in my garage, surrounded by greasy tools and busted engines. The radio was blaring some classic rock, and I was elbow deep in a heap of wires. Just another day for a guy like me, you know? Then this spaceship swoops down out of the sky, right into my backyard. No kidding? It looked like something straight out of those sci-fi flicks I used to watch as a kid. I stood there, wrench in hand, staring at this thing, thinking I'd hit my last beer too hard. Next thing I know, the door creaks open and out steps this seven-foot-tall alien dude. Green as a dollar bill, with eyes that could size you up quicker than a used car salesman. He didn't speak English, but you could tell he meant business. I ain't one to back down, though. As a combat veteran, I've witnessed some strange things, but nothing like an alien green giant from outer space. So I walk up to him, wipe my hands on a rag, and say, Yo, what's the deal, Green Bean? Now you lost or something. Surprisingly, the alien understands. Turns out his spaceship's on the fritz and he needs a mechanic. Figures, I'm thinking. Great, now I gotta fix an intergalactic jalopy. We spend the next few hours going over the ship. I can't make heads or tails of most of the tech, but I'm good with my hands. The alien who calls himself Zorkon watches me like a hawk, probably never seen a human fix anything before. As I'm tinkering with the engines, Zorkon starts telling me about his home planet. Turns out their ride-or-die currency are jokes. Yeah, you heard me right. These guys trade jokes like we trade cash. And Zorkon's got a sense of humor drier than my ex-wife's turkey on Thanksgiving. We're swapping stories and he's cracking jokes in his alien language and I'm pretending to get him, but we're getting along. It's weird, but it works. Finally, after hours of work, the spaceship roars to life. Zorkon's eyes light up like I just handed him a winning lottery ticket. He slaps me on the back and we are suddenly best buds. Now here's the kicker. Zorkon ain't just grateful, he's impressed. He claims to have not met any species in space who can use tools like humans. Apparently, fixing stuff ain't common in the cosmos. Before he takes off, Zorkon hands me this weird alien tool. He says it's a thank you gift, something rare from his planet. It's got buttons and lights that I can't make heads or tails of, but I take it anyway. Hell, it might come in handy fixing the lawnmower. As the spaceship lifts off, I'm standing there, covered in grease, watching this alien ship vanish into the night sky. I shake my head, thinking, isn't that exciting? I fixed alien technology in my garage with just a little elbow grease. Life's funny, ain't it? One minute, you're cussing at a busted engine, and the next, you're sharing a laugh with a green giant from outer space. Who would have thought out of all the places in the universe he'd end up in my garage? I go back inside, grab a cold one from the fridge, and sit on the hood of my beat-up truck. Looking up at the stars, I can't help but chuckle. Maybe Earth ain't such a bad spot after all. And maybe, just maybe, the universe ain't so big that a regular guy like me can't leave his mark on it.